Hello, I'm Dan Alexander. Thanks for joining me. I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. Today, I'd like to share a couple of really lovely microphones with you and talk to you about a few applicable recording techniques. Here we have a beautiful old Neumann jewel box in very nice condition. Inside, we find this beautiful Neumann SM69 tube stereo microphone. Now, a stereo microphone, as you probably know, is two microphones in one body with the capsules very, very close together, eliminating phase cancellation problems. So, there are two large diaphragms in an SM69. There's two AC701 tubes inside this body and two output transformers. And you can use the microphone stereo using any number of different stereo miking techniques. Or in fact, you can use it mono. You don't have to use both the outputs. It's perfectly okay. All right, so the top capsule swivels in comparison to the bottom diaphragm so that you can take advantage of the various types of stereo miking techniques. This is a wonderful microphone. You could use this to record an orchestra. You could use it to as drum overheads or a piano mic or a guitar mic or a vocal mic. There's no signal source that this microphone won't sound spectacular on. It is basically a stereo two-channel version of the Neumann M269. Uh, and um, gosh, if you can get your hands on one of these, it's a great, great sounding mic. So uh, I'll, I'll uh, let me show you one other thing here. This is a Neumann stereo power supply. Cable goes to the microphone. You have two independent pattern chain switches that go omni, cardioid, bidirectional, and uh, one for each one of the diaphragms so that you can use, for example, so that you could use this microphone if you were recording MS, you would swivel this, so, and this would be bidirectional and this would be cardioid. But more about that later. I want to show you something else. So that's a, an SM69 stereo large diaphragm microphone. What we have here in this beautiful case is a Neumann SM2. And an SM2 is, is beautiful. But in addition to being beautiful, it is a stereo small diaphragm microphone. So what is this? It's basically a stereo version of the Neumann KM56. Each one of these capsules is continuously variable in pattern from that power supply that you saw. And uh, the, you'll note that unlike the SM69, the grill top is one piece. Well, what you find at the, on the top let me see if I can get it to focus, is a, a groove. And in, in that groove with a screwdriver or uh, a coin or something. <laughs> I had a guitar pick I was using before. But in any case, you can, with, with a screwdriver in that groove or a coin, you can turn the capsule inside the housing in, in the top capsule will swivel just like on the SM69 in comparison to the bottom capsule that's fixed. So you can use this for all of those same uh, miking techniques that you could use the uh, uh, large diaphragm SM69 for. There also is another version of this microphone called an SM23. What's the difference? Well, the difference is that the SM2 was designed to be powered from one of these 
box power supplies. The SM23 was designed to be powered from a pair of Neumann N52 power supplies, which is what German broadcast used. Aside from that, they are identical. They're identical, the same microphone. So anyways, so let's talk about a couple of the standard stereo miking techniques that you might want to use with a stereo microphone. Okay, so it, probably the best known one is MS. Okay, and what does that mean? Mid-side recording. So if the, if the band was over there, this microphone, you'd have the caps, the top capsule set in bi-directional, the bottom capsule set in cardioid. You put the microphone in the center of the group, not in the middle of it, but out in front, but in the center, so that the cardioid capsule is giving you some kind of a image of the, of the signal source. This one is set virtually across the signal source in bi-directional. So what do you do with it? Well, you take those two signals and you can do this either before or after you record. You molt the signals so that on one side, you are combining the in, the, the in phase bidirectional signal with the cardioid capsule. And on the other side, the out of phase bidirectional combined with the cardioid. And what happens? Well, you have your, you have more than one fader, of course, and how you combine the, the in phase and out of phase signal with the cardioid signal will determine how much of the ambience of the situation you are getting in relationship to the uh, cardioid signal. And what happens when you combine them, the two signals in mono, the in phase and out of phase bidirectional signals cancel and you just get the cardioid signal. So it gives you a signal that is very mono compatible which was important back in the day of mono broadcasting. And okay, so that's MS recording. Uh, it's wonderful, by the way, it's very literal. You could use, you don't have, it doesn't have to be on a group or on an orchestra. It could be on a drum overheads or on a piano. I'm sure people are recording vocals MS occasionally. It's a, a really great sounding uh, uh, technique if, the environment that you're recording in sounds good. If it doesn't sound good, MS ain't gonna sound good. It's very literal. So, all right, what's another common technique? Another common technique is XY. And XY recording is like this. You set the bottom capsule off to the side, you turn the other one so it's off to the other side like that. So you're recording like that, and it can be wider or narrower depending on the situation. And, uh, um, oh, it can sound fantastic. Depends on the situation. You gotta try it. Okay, uh, one other one, <clears throat> ORTF, French broadcast standard recording technique. The French have always gotta have their own way to do something. Okay, so what do they do? They set both the diaphragms in bi-directional, and then they cross them in X, Y. And I guess depending on, you know, how close or far, how far away from the signal source you are will determine how much of the ambient recording, uh, ambient sound or the dry signal uh, you are getting. So that's ORTF. And I don't know, check it out. If you have a chance to get any either of these microphones or a C24 stereo microphone for that matter, they're fantastic. They're wonderful. Uh, occasionally, you can find a really good deal on a stereo microphone because a lot of people simply don't understand what to do with it. 
There's nothing you can do with a regular microphone. You can't do with a, with a mono microphone. You can't do with a stereo microphone. It's not a problem. You don't have to plug in both outputs. So uh, that's it. One other thing I'd like to mention, my book, Dan Alexander Audio, A Vintage Odyssey, will be in the stores in the middle of December. It's available for pre-order on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and in various booksellers. And uh, check it out because I think you're going to like it. All right. Thanks very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Take care.